Greetings and welcome back to room 303 and our talks with Walt as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We turn now to the little poem, Long, Long Hints. We're going we're gonna to notice the, the, the repetitions uh, that will happen in this poem. Notice Long, Long Hints. This is poem 12 of the 31 of Goodbye My Fancy and it's another theodicy. In other words, it's an attempt to try to answer the question, why must bad things happen? Why must there be pain? Why must there be suffering in this world that we live in? Now, our assumptions are that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net, down that left-hand side, Talks with Walt, our playlist, and that you've been with us from the very beginning, in the very, in, in, in the inscription poems from Eidolon's on, and the attempt of, of the Odyssey, as we have said. Often for Whitman, it is no longer ask, why did this happen to me or to us, but rather learn to ask, why did this happen for me or for us, changing that two to a four for Whitman, allows you to no longer consider yourself a victim of circumstances and the like. Our hope is as well that you are exposed already to our introductory comments to this cluster called Goodbye My Fancy. And we just finished, of course, with Shakespeare and the Bacon Cipher. The uh, information that will be provided for us from, uh, from Norton's will simply tell us that this poem was first published in Goodbye My Fancy, 1891. Now, as we turn to the poem itself, it's a short poem, right? It's, it's, it's a very brief poem. And yet, I find the construction interesting. It's an after, after, then construction. Let's take a look at it. After a long, long, again, the, the, the stacking of these. We've seen this. Whitman likes to do this. After a long, long course, hundreds of years. So he's talking to you. He's talking to me. He's talking to those of us who decided to devote our time and our energy to actually sitting down and reading every one of these poems, which is, I, I will say it to you, with only a handful of poems now left, it's a remarkable achievement if you've been able to do this. Quite a remarkable achievement. After a long, long course, hundreds of years, and now, you'll say it, denials, this is an interesting list, watch this list, denials, accumulations, roused love and joy and thought, notice your threes, hopes, wishes, aspirations, Ponderings, we know that word from Leaves of Grass, don't we? Victories, makes us think of drum taps. Myriads of readers, obviously now you're, you're some of those. Coding, compassioning, covering, notice his C's, the repetition of his three C words. And then the dash. The second after. After ages and ages, again, the repetition of, of a word. And then he uses this interesting word, incrustations. Which is the only time it gets used in laser grass. That is to say that kind of hard coating around the outside. Think of that, the power of that word as it relates to the idea of a seed. That relates to the idea of leaves of grass. After, after, ages and ages and crustaceans. Then, the construction. Then, and then his word only. Only may these songs reach fruition. And of course, we're keenly aware of his use of the word fruition. And the way that it works so well for leaves of grass. I mean, go back and Song of Myself 6 and just look at the way he plays around with the idea of fruition and resurrection and the idea that death is actually something quite lucky, as he will say it. Well, what's going on in this little poem? I think it's a brilliant little poem at 2A. There's always, right, the hope that an artist has that the creation will outlive the creator and that there will be some final understanding and acceptance out of that incrustation. In other words, the text is created. We'll call it leaves of grass. It's then provided and what will it produce? We're obviously here going to think about, for example, Shelley's Ode to the West Wind and that longing at the conclusion in part five that somehow or another the spark will be lit and carried. At 2B, I love this after, 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 and then, or after, after, then construction. And I love his word choice of incrustation. I mean, it gets used one time only in Lisa Grass, and it's, and it's right here. It's going to lead, obviously, a whole lot of readers to go look it up. Well, what's incrustation? You know, that kind of thing. At 3A, though, I like for us to think about the way that Whitman continues to play games. Guys, I've said this so many times. I think he's having so much fun in these poems. Think about this one, for example. Do you remember at the conclusion of Song of Myself, 52, you'll remember it. He says, if you want me, look for me under your boot soles. you remember how he says that? Think about how that idea and that imagery works rather nicely with incrustations. It's so brilliant the way he plays that game. Finally, a 3B to own a poem like this. What project do you hope? somehow makes it through its incrustation. Do you, and maybe that will be for you the very life that you're living. And hopefully that life is better lived by virtue of your study of Lisa Grass. Thank you.